What's up guys? Uh, before I get into this Q&A today, I, although I have a lot of questions from uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, I just want to do a quick little shout out. Please check out allineedskate.com as you can see behind me. Some of our skateboards and apparel. Um, we also just put out some brand new shorts. These things are fucking sick. Uh, you can check everything out at allineedskate.com. Uh, if you're in need of a skateboard or some apparel, you know, skater own, skater run. <clears throat> yeah, please check that out. All right. What's up, guys? Everyone tuning in live. What up, Talon? Um, yeah, so we did that. Also, shout out to the homies at 3D. They, 3D Innovations. They hooked it up with a DVD. Throwback DVD. Things sick and a t-shirt. Just want to shout those guys out. Shout out to Elwood in the back. You hear him barking? He's uh, he's going to interrupt the show the whole time. But that's all right. He's the man. All right. I think that's it, man. Yeah. Let's get into it. So the first questions come from Instagram. If you are on Instagram, please give All I Need Skate a follow at All I Need Skate on Instagram. And check out everything we have going on. But this is a uh, first question comes from Sammy Skates 2. What up, Sammy? <clears throat> and he asks, what's the craziest situation you found yourself in with the cops slash security while on tour? Okay, let me think about that for a second. I've had multiple situations because, you know, when you're street skating and you're traveling and you're in other countries, it gets pretty hectic. Um, the first one I'm thinking about would be we were overseas on a birdhouse trip when I used to ride for birdhouse. And we went to this spot, the homie from Cliche, Jeremy, Daklin. What up, Jeremy? He took us to a skate spot, and it was the most perfect bank. Like, you could ride up this. It was a kind of hit hard, but you could hit this bank and grind the top and slide it and come back in. So we were so hyped because we had been in a van and all that stuff. So we get to the spot, bunch of hungry skateboarders in another country, and we get out, and everyone just starts shredding this perfect bank spot, bank to grind and slide. Um... All of a sudden, people are yelling at us from the windows up above. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. They're screaming at us from up above, and we, we don't understand them because I believe it's in Portugal. And they're speaking Portuguese, so none of us know what they're saying. And uh, about five minutes, people are starting to warm up, about to film a trick, maybe ten minutes in. And then all of a sudden, two vans pull up two van full of dudes and they all get out and they have like glass bottle like it was like a movie they had glass bottles they had like little mini bats and stuff it was crazy and um so they roll out and none of us can understand them so we're all backing up and we had a big crew too we had like you know 10 to 12 dudes and we're just backing up like trying to talk to these people and Jeremy I believe it was Jeremy that could speak Portuguese he's talking to him and apparently what happened was like they had been getting skate kicking skateboarders out of that spot for a long time and uh it just so happened that they you know the last people that there were there were friggin you know were rude to them they got into a big fight and they just swore like if any more skateboarders came that they were just gonna go crazy so they did they actually one of them went at um i want to say susky and he like dodged him and he like swung at him i know a bottle got thrown so they weren't even security guards. They were just like people that lived in the building and they were like soccer hooligans that fucking did not like us, did not want us to skate in front of their house and uh, just came out crazy. I remember like walking backwards and seeing everyone walk down the hill to get away from them, you know? And then like I remember running back too because like my homie Seamus was stuck over there by himself. So we went back over. And then another time, sketchy, Sammy Skates asks, like I said, what's the craziest situation you found yourself in with cop security guard while on tour? Another time would be actually when I was at home, but I was showing some people around. We went to this train station uh, up near Boston, Mass. There's a video online that has about 5 million views. There's a couple of them. They all have millions of views, and it's me arguing with this dude. Uh, we were at the train station. I'm skating, it's a public place. This guy walks by, I'm in the middle of the intersection because I'm trying to start my line. 
and just you know start get some speed run across this intersection it was so hectic because i'm trying to like i wanted to film a line and i had to watch for traffic and i was trying to be patient because it's a public train station so i'm trying not to get in people's way and not be a nuisance you know like just as everyone else was but i'm trying to get this line it was like i was filming for my video part and it was one it was getting towards the crunch time so i had to get it you know and this dude walks by me in the crosswalk not a security guard not a cop just a random like civilian walks by middle-aged man maybe like 45 and he goes you can't skate there i go okay just one word kept going you know i figured he's not a police not a security guard he just doesn't like a skate in there you know and oh you saw the video sick <laughs> live stream says they saw the video but um yeah and this dude just walks by me and he said one word he said you can't skate there and i said okay because that's how I am. I'm like, whatever. You know, it's me, you. You're doing one thing. I'm doing one thing. You're not a cop, security guard. You can have your opinion, but I'm not going to listen. You know, like I was going to wait for the cops or a security guard to come. Because I had this line. And then he goes, sits down, pretends like he's on his phone. And I just get ready because I'm ready to skate the spot. And, I, you know, the light changes. I run across the street, throw my board down, hop on my board. And then all of a sudden, he he like puts his phone down, jumps up and postures up and like comes in my face and I just kind of like chest them a little bit and I was like dude like what the fuck are you doing oh he grabbed my skateboard too and threw it over a fence this all happened in like 15 seconds I dropped my board threw down skated he jumped up chest bumped me grabbed my board threw it over the fence and then I just proceeded to verbally abuse him <clears throat> I made fun of his fashion sense too I made fun of his vest he had like a salmon colored vest it was kind of flamboyant and I called it gay said you had a gay vest on <laughs> but besides that i think i had a valid point i was just saying like look you're a pedestrian on the street just like i am and like you're not the police not security guard you can like that i'm not here but just call them and they'll come and deal with it you know there's people like that all the time they're like i'm just gonna call the cops i'm like all right go ahead do what you gotta do and then that's it you know and uh but who the fuck is he to try to like push me and grab he grabbed my board and threw it over a fence you know like what if i was crazy like this guy and then I just like verbally insulted him and basically told him like hey like you want to fight because like you draw you're crossing lines like you're physically touching someone else's shit like what if I grabbed the dude's phone and just hucked it over a fence he grew my skateboard you know uh but I just put him in his place and it was all captured on video and it's out there you can check it on our YouTube channel if you're on the channel right now watching you already know that um, yeah, Sammy, good question. But I mean, I have, I have altercations with cops and security guards all the time. Another time, like, I think we were at MIT and we were skating a spot and this lady cop was there and she like, we were standing on the stairs and she's like, don't move. And I kind of like stumbled when she said that because we're on stairs and I was sore and I like stepped back a couple and she like grabbed me, thought I was going to run. And then, uh, I just kind of instinct instinctively because I was falling and she grabbed me. I just kind of like put my hand up and it hit her arm and she just like felt like I was trying to like, get free. And then she just got on her little megaphone, her little microphone thing. It was like, doo -doo -doo -doo. and then another cop came running, driving in a car, ran through a red light and in, in the intersection, like, like an action movie and like sped out and like stopped and came up and got all crazy with me. He just tried to fight me. That was the crazy part. Like he didn't even try to like talk or anything. And I'm not a crazy person, you know, like I'm just kind of like chilling, you know, so. And, uh, so. Yeah, so I'm just like chilling and uh, we got out of that because he didn't even want to arrest me. He just wanted to fight me. And my friends like separated us and we just left. Um, next question comes from Instagram and it is A26D26. And he writes, how do you stay motivated? Um, I try to do stuff daily. Like I try to have lists of things that I want to work on. So I always have lists going because like I'm always trying to work on something and get better at it and keep progressing and pushing forward and learning, you know? So like, I try to use my time wisely. I try to focus on things that I care about and that I'm passionate about and try to get better and better and better and just see how far we can take things, you know? But I stay motivated because I have a list of things that I already want to do that I've just dreamt of. I dream, that's how I stay motivated. I think of things and things that you could do that were awesome while we're breathing, you know? Like I imagine all this stuff and we'll, we work towards it and like, you know, it takes a long time for some stuff to um, come to fruition, but there's things daily we can do. We can push by inches every day and just keep going, you know? So I just try to, like, think of that. I try to think about, like, 
how lucky we are to be breathing and have the opportunities to do the things we do. And then I realized that these things aren't, um, we're not entitled, we have to earn them. They're not, you know, like, you have to build the things that you wanna, you have to become what you envision yourself to become. And if you and can envision yourself owning a company or a brand and building things, it takes a long time because you have to get better and then you have to find people that wanna work in the same direction and gain skills together and work forward, you know, move forward. And um, it takes time to become that, especially if you're young, you know? And uh, I don't know, I've just been dreaming since I was 12, you know, like, uh, I have like a anxiety, a little anxiety in life just because I've been through like a lot of trauma at a young age. Like at 13, I lost my father and like my mom has, was always a wreck. She was always falling apart and on drugs and like couldn't keep it together for herself, let alone the five kids she had, you know, with three different men. So that gives me anxiety and worry because I, I think about safety and like, um, Think about like you know it just keeps me moving though it gives me that little anxiety just get, keeps me worried and makes me uh realize life can be crazy at times and that we can put ourselves in hell too a lot of things i learned is through the actions actions of my mom you know hell yeah nate what up um my mom just she struggled her whole life had a hard time figuring out how to be content and happy and like bad things happen to her you know like it's not like she was an evil person she just life is hard and there's things that can fuck you over, <laughs> you know? Like, I was born into a world where my parents were already in chaos, so I was just born into a chaotic world, you know? And um, just remembering my story, where I've come from, and the people around me, um, they motivate me. All the people around me motivate me, because I know they're going through the same thing. Like, there's degrees and levels to the craziness of life, but, like, we all feel highs and lows, and we're similar, so... <clears throat> Yeah, so that motivates me. I think about that. I just think about how finite things are. I thought about death at 13 because my father passed. You know, he was in a gang, a motorcycle gang, and he got shot, passed away, and uh, fucking, that'll shake you out of apathy, you know? And then I've just been scrapping for so long, dude, to get every inch. I've been moving forward, you know, like dealing with a broken family and trying to rebuild that and trying to keep my sanity because I had... I had like a weird sense of reality because I was born into this situation where things were just like chaotic. So trying to manage my emotions and I've had like a lot of work. I've been working my whole life, but I think we all have to do that. We have to work hard at becoming what we want to become. You know, it's not free or given to us. We have to earn it and become it, you know, and then we have to work together to, to achieve these things and dreams. And we all got to be motivated and keep each other motivated, you know, or inspire each other, I guess. I don't know, I'm working on all this stuff, but motivation, I never seem to have a, I'm always motivated. Sometimes I need to learn how to rest a little bit so I can, um, you know, allow my body to heal and uh, take breaks here and there. I take a lot of naps so I can uh, shut down because like I constantly am on the go, you know? So I don't know, just stay motivated by thinking about the opportunities and potential that we have and the possibilities and I don't know. And the fact that we are examples. As you get older, you become an example of a human that's successful and happy, you know? So, like, trying to remind yourself daily to carry yourself like that is not always easy, you know? We need reminders and we need to remember that we can be awesome, <laughs> you know? There's a lot of bullshit out there, too, you know? Like, there's a lot of people selling you some bullshit just to make capitalize off you, but, like, I don't know. You gotta watch out for pitfalls in America. It's the Wild West, you know? Everybody has the freedom to do whatever, you know? And some people have bad intentions or shitty intentions and aims. And, dude, I don't know. I've seen some crazy shit growing up. And, like, a lot of my family is hooked on drugs and a uh, product of, like, alcoholism. So I can see where, like, things can get crazy, you know? So, I don't know. Um, I stay motivated by thinking about the individual and what we could become, you know? And if we could restrain ourselves and build ourselves up to be better. I think about that a lot. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Motivation just comes from the realization that life could be gone at any moment, you know? And that sounds sad to people, and it was, it is, and it is to me too, like the fact that things can be here and then gone. 
but that's like the nature of the game, you know, so it makes time valuable. So then we have to just keep going, okay, well, like, things could be gone. We don't have to, we don't have to freak ourselves out, but we can just be aware of that and think of that and strategize and the fact that, you know, we have time, so let's use it. There's inches in front of us to do cool things. We can just get, like, you know, it's easy to get into apathy and just get lazy or indulgent in one thing, always doing one thing in one way, so... <clears throat> you gotta remember to rest, take a break, realize you don't know everything, try something new in your life, you know, that's good to do too. I'm working on that. Just keep growing, keep expanding, daily reminders, like think about that, that'll keep you reminded. I don't know, that's why That's why I call the brand All I Need is like, all I need is to keep growing with family and friends and people I love and do, like see where the ride could go, you know, like, that motivates me, you know? It's all I need for sure. <clears throat> Ryan Duff, he and he asks, what was your first board? Was it a toy board or a pro setup? Uh, my first board, it was a hand-me-down. I met my homie Dale Raymond. Shout out Dale, what up? Who's now a chef, which is amazing. He's like worked really hard to get, to carve out a little niche in his life and have, he has a family and he's found a career that he's been pursuing and fucking so cool dude dale's the man but i met him and he was skating already and i didn't even really know what skating was and he did a kickflip or a, he probably did a tray flip too because he's so far advanced i never had never even really stepped on a skateboard but to butt ride which is fun as hell and i do that as much as possible now you know and um yeah just uh dale was the most epic dude and he had an extra board and he showed me an ollie and that blew my mind and then kickflip, tray flip and then I just like wanted to skate forever and the first board was a hand-me-down but it wasn't a, it wasn't um it wasn't a toy board. It was like a legit setup. Dale already knew about magazines and like videos and like pro models and stuff like that. Like he schooled me to the game later on. I didn't know anything about it. Like Tony Hawk maybe, that was it, 900, you know, like on TV. But I didn't know about the whole subculture and underbelly and all the people that made it up and characters and all the epic shit that is skating i didn't know about none of that and i just uh got that first board you know and i was grateful for, for him because we just hung out after that day after day it was best friends you know dale's the man i still go visit him i brought the all i need team and they met him too alex what up my dude um that was a live feed a live viewer on on the feed all right, Ryan, thanks for that question, man. I know a lot of people, they get, like, I interview a lot of people on this show, and uh, a lot of them start off with, like, a shitty, like, Walmart board or, like, and by shitty, I just mean, like, their parents went to a big box store and they bought a product that was cheaper, cheaper in quality, usually owned by, like, people that don't skate, that are just trying to make money off skating. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm like, well, at least... If you're gonna, if a skate, skateboarder should be making that money if they were business savvy, you know, like just do something with, you know, it sucks to put out a diminishing quality, like a lower quality product, but like, you know, if you reach people that way, that's always my big conflict with that was like these brands, they make a lower quality product and they put it in like a big box store and they use the image of skateboarding and they sell cheap boards to kids, but that gets them into skating because there is parents out there that don't want to buy like, don't want to invest that much money because they don't understand they don't know or understand how sick skating is or if their kid will stick with it you know but um i didn't get one of those boards but people on the podcast say that was their first board they got and then they found out about a skate shop and skate videos and skate crews and all the epic shit that is skateboarding and found out like and then they started supporting those people you know but yeah it's one of those things that was from ryan yeah and then uh next question instagram at Ben Ross, 1990, says, smallest wheels you've ever skated? Not, probably like 49s, 48s, maybe. I know those are probably really fucking hard to find right now, Ben. Uh, but I don't know. I ride, right now I ride a 51. Things are sick, you know? Okay. Next question. J. Michael McCarthy. He just writes, Day One or Rodney Mullen? I say fuck it both. Can I do that? I guess I can. Like they're both so good in in different ways and the technical ability those two had like growing up watching Day One do some crazy tray flip nose blunt to Manny to like kickflip out like the shit he's done on a skateboard is like mind bending. 
And then uh, Rodney Mullen, same, like inventing tricks and just taking his version of skating to such extreme, like even when it's not even like cool or popular in mainstream skateboarding, but just going for it. Um, so both of them. But if I really had to pick, I'd say day one. It's because day one had more of a street skater feel. I mean, Mullen had his parts and stuff, but day one still continues with all the street skating and finding spots, these custy little spots. They're sick. It's funny, a lot of the, bo those guys both, um, they both like got into uh, just like plastic benches and putting them in spots and moving them around and stuff like that. That was strange, like seeing someone at a schoolyard. The thing about California is like, out in a schoolyard, you have all these plastic benches and tables that are meant for skating. <laughs> whether they know it or not, and people would move those things around and stack them, and it was crazy to watch that in videos, and both those dudes went super extreme with that, but it was fun to watch, you know what I mean? Let me check the live feed real quick. Sorry, boys. Smith Fist says, I just got into skating, and I bought myself a board from a German factory called Titus. I got quite a nice board, but cost me 116 Sucks to be a poor student, but at least I can learn to skate now. Hell yeah. I'm stoked that you got a board. It's a good investment. The thing about skateboarding that's epic and skateboarders, I guess, the things I love about skateboarders is that when you see a skateboarder and they've been skating a lot, they're, you can tell they're doing usually pretty good in life for the most part, you know? Like if you can tell, like usually you see someone and they can, they're well-rounded and skate all different ways and they, you see them and they're, they're usually shredding. I'm like, yeah, they're doing well. They're shredding hard, you know? Like, they're just killing it. And it's just like you can tell when someone's killing it on a board how they're generally feeling in life. But not always, you know? Like, I used to go out and skate and just be, like, fucking over it. And I would try some gnarly shit, and I did it. Like, I did some gnarly shit on my board that was scary that I probably shouldn't have done just because I was feeling, like, kind of depressed and angry, you know? Like, <laughs> but not always. There's other times I got these gnar these epic bangers, um, and I wasn't even, like, depressed or angry, you know? Like... But there's been dark roads. <laughs> um, I don't even know where I was going. Oh, yeah, live viewer. At least you got a board. That's epic, dude. That means you got a board, and now you can figure that one out, you know? Yeah, device fingerboard says skateboarding saves lives. I couldn't agree more, man. It gives me something to work on to continually to, like, keep working at. It. You can't really beat skateboarding, and there's so many different ways to do it and different versions, and it's like a piece of... It's almost like clay, you know, but it's like you're doing it with your body and a board and like it's not attached to you, you're not holding on. So it's like all in how the energy and style you put into that and try to figure out how to do what you want to do with the tricks and express that and show that through video parts is my favorite. But people do it through contest and like nowadays on Instagram and Facebook, just daily stuff. I'm going to say I love fucking video parts. I'm working on my next one. I'm so excited for this. Um... I'm gonna try to make it my best part yet, you know? Like, I'm not gonna be as gnarly as I was in the past, but I wanna have new stuff and, like, just kinda be really stoked on everything I put out at that time, you know? So, we're working on that all this summer. Me and the All I Need crew. It's gonna be a heavy video, though. A lot of good dudes that are, like, coming into their style and their capability and they're realizing their possibilities and potential, and it's, it's like, coming out. It's rad to see every session. I film the vlogs for that too you get all the warm-up stuff but we've been saving for our video parts too and some of the stuff leaks in the vlogs so um yeah thank you so thank you ryan ben ross j michael mccarthy thanks for your questions derek rodriguez asks boston skating versus cali and other places um I don't really think there's a versus thing like no like verse anything i did when i was younger i said stupid shit like that but like I just think there's difference in in preference and both have their strengths and weaknesses you know like out in cali the weather's perfect all the time which sounds like a strength to someone on the east coast because <laughs> we got the opposite but like there's weaknesses that come with that too you you're in paradise 24 7 weather wise you can skate all the time so like you got to find things to do so you don't get hurt and stay hurt all the time like when i lived in cali for two years I had a stretch where I was like constantly hurt and I think it was because I was just skating too much. I needed to balance it out, you know, like I had access to like crazy spots, perfect spots with like people from magazines and like, like it's the, it was the industry there and um, I could just get down all the time, 24 seven. 
And the idea of creating content on that level was so sick and enticing to me. But I'd always be hurt, you know? I should have took some t days off just to, like, <clears throat> you know? But it's like I have a crazy work ethic. But I balanced it out now, you know? Like, I found work ethic. Being on the East Coast again reminded me that because there's weathers. There are downtimes. You got to figure out how to do stuff with your time, you know? <clears throat> so now I try to find things that will help build skateboarding. Even if I'm not physically skateboarding, I'm trying to do things that will help grow skateboarding like the new england and we do that and like working on all i need with the brand and just working with dudes and sponsoring and filming editing capturing all the sessions look i try to go around to all the local skate parks outdoors and go skate all the cities and just kind of cover the scene you know like if i'm not skating i'm usually filming or editing skating or working on something that'll help push our skateboarding culture and um community forward in a positive way that's things i like try to put my time and energy into when i'm not skating all the time instead of just keep trying to get bangers and be like that but there's a time and place for that when i was like 20 to 25 that's all i, I was getting paid just to skateboard you know so i just indulge <laughs> and get hurt stay hurt sometimes balance it out you know all right back to the questions so i yeah i guess i was for derek i don't think it's a versus thing but Boston and Cali, and I love the East Coast skating because there's textures, the spots are rough, custy, it's not perfect. Like sometimes you go to a spot you see like a photo of, and you, not sometimes, all the time. You see photos and you're like, I could do that and this and that. You get there and you're humbled by how rough it is. But then you also have respect because you're like, damn, the shit that I've seen go down, like pretty fucking gnarly, you know? Like for this circumstance, for this shit feeling like sandpaper or there being 10 cracks or you, a lot of times you got a bond of spots, but dude, the spots look so sick and it's like you put work into the spot and then you make it skatable and liberate it and you know, it might get fucked up over the winter and it might be gone again or not, you know? Like, but it, I don't know, it makes you earn it. If you feel like you earn it because you're working towards it, you know? And it's like, it wasn't perfect, you know? So there's there's a uh, pluses, you know, and the things about East Coast is the weather, just like the fluctuating in it, you know, like we have seasons kind of like people are in the skate parks in the winter a lot when you get a lot when you get East Coast, you know, like people live in skate parks, which is rad, though, because like you got to you want to skate and you get to meet everyone. There's such a rad community and you get to see all these different styles and people coming from all at least I do because I live near Skater's Edge and there's some people that have like third layer. There's like skate parks in the winter. If you have winters you know what i'm talking about there's these skate parks you go to and they become a sanctuary I fucking love these places and you meet so many epic people you know like i don't know like but that that's because of the weather you know i'm sure they do it out west and stuff they have parks that they go to and stuff but someone just about being tracked indoors you know like having to drive there like you have no option you know like in the middle of the winter drive to the skate park in the middle of blizzards <laughs> not the best idea <laughs> But whatever. Um, all right, back to the questions. T -t -t Thank you, Derek. That was a solid question. Aaron Skate Goat on Instagram asks, what's the most terrifying trick you stomped and where? Well, I was just thinking about the tail slide for my video part uh, in a New York video called State of Mind. Anthony Scheller, if you type my name in, State of Mind. That'll pop up. My last, my ender in that one, that was probably one of the scariest tricks Cause it's just this huge drainage ditch like you ride around the wall and then there's like a pyramid basically and you can like slide and grind the top of the pyramid and ride down this ditch and you're going down this ditch like it's like i don't know how fast it is but it feels like you're in a you're in a car and getting thrown out the door <laughs> basically riding down this thing like i was skating with zared i was skating with zared and susky at this spot and you basically ride down the ledge carve down the bank hit this huge pyramid thing, hip thing that you're gonna grind or slide or pop a trick on and then ride down this thing and it shoots you out like a car, for real. And then you have to ride up another, the other wall and you're already flying. So, Zared tried to trick, uh, some gnarly trick, I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, he tried bail, his shoe came off, he slid down the ditch, the whole bottom of his sock came off. <laughs> and it was, so it was super rough, too. And, uh... I was like, I watched these dudes try it, getting down, people are getting clips, I'm just off to the side, like, damn, I wonder if I could do something, but I'm nervous, and so I'm like carving down this bank, trying to get used to, I, I, I remember starting from the ground up, though, to be honest, I like dropped in a quarter of the way, and then I went up halfway, dropped in, and I was like, that was pretty fast, three quarters, I'm like, holy shit, how are these dudes hitting the top of this, and then sliding, riding down this thing, and uh, 
but they were so i was like fuck it must be possible so then i drop in the whole thing roll in and then i started trying grinds got a couple five o's so sick and then i nailed the back i nailed the tail slide that was my ender front side tail slide and ride down this ditch and nearly die but uh yeah i just remember that was terrifying because there's a point where i'm like you just gotta black out and you just go okay i'm gonna try to uh, this been an hour i'm physically exhausted and half of it's my fault because i'm still bailing <laughs> i could have done this and just pulled the band-aid real quick about a half an hour ago and then um then you just like black out kind of because you're like fuck it i'm gonna take a gnarly slam like this is it's gonna go down you know like let's do it and then you just take a chance and sometimes you take that gnarly slam sometimes you ride away and that, that trick and that video that was one of those times where i was like i'm either gonna eat complete shit and just get knocked out or just ride away and i rode away and i was like intense but sick feeling and then there's been a couple times like that with uh big handrails too that like i've just fully committed whether i got hurt or not and it was like too terrifying you know but um but yeah let me see live feed creaker todd Thanks, Shetler, for keep keeping the underground lit. Hell yeah. Thank you. And thank you for spelling my last name correctly. S-H-E-T-L-E-R. Autocorrect gets you on that, man. Every time, like, they get my last name with autocorrect. But Shetler, thank you. That means a lot, homie. I love skateboarding. That's all I need, for real. No bullshit. I need it in my life because, like, I just need it as therapy. I need it as community. I need it because... It's fun and it's an escape. It can be whatever you want it to be, and it's so dynamic. It's so cool. And I give the scooter guy shit, but only because I know how epic skateboarding is. It's like you don't even hold on to the thing, and you, it's limitless. And anybody can do anything. It's like, like amazing to see what skateboarding is and is going to become. So it's epic to me. Ep heavy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Aaron. That was a good question. Nailing it. Mad Bradberries says best spot in new b best spot i don't know if it's the best spot but i fucking love this spot um and i'm gonna give it away you guys should go all go skate it. i want to see what's capable on this thing uh it's called the armory in new bedford it's just a hubba that goes down uh, the front of it it's just like um a, a downhill and there's a hubba you have to drop in on this hill like two feet hit this down ledge and it just goes down you know fast you pop out and then you get this sketchy ride out into a road um but it's super fun, man. I just got a trick on it for my video for my next video part that I'm super stoked on. I was just there like um like a week ago with my homie and he uh I thought he was gonna do my do the trick that I did. And uh he did back tail and I was like wondering where he's going. He flipped he flicked into it and I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> but yeah, that so that's common, dude. I'm stoked to show you guys that. Um Brian Catalano, what up my dude? What's your favorite clip of yourself ever filmed or the trick you've been most hyped on? Whew, that's heavy, man. That's a heavy question. There's a lot, dude. I mean, I've filmed with RB Malley for a long time, filmed with him for years, and he's filmed that tail side, and he filmed this front side flip in Germany over this rail into a bank. So those are some sick highlights from rb seamus deegan i've filmed with him for years all my beginning footage man all that means the world to me and that was all shit that i worked really hard for and seamus filmed me did all that um i mean uh there's so many filmers out there chase barty nailed it i filmed with him a whole bunch he helped me with the original all i need video and some of the tricks in that were insane um thank you Dan McGrath, he killed, He filmed our first two All I Need videos, Thrive, Prosper, Rise, and In the Trenches. He filmed the majority and edited them, and he's going to help us with our third one as well. So, stoked for that. Uh, I don't really have, like, a specific trick to mind. I mean, all that shit I put my heart into, you know? <laughs> but, um, and I was stoked. Everyone filmed so rad, it's like... Everyone has their own style. Filming is one of those things like skating. That's probably why it's linked so closely together, you know? Um, you Anybody can do it and apply it and get better at it and take it to places with filming. And, like, those dudes all kill it. Sammy Skates, shout out, too, because he's been filming and killing it. I love all his videos. Uh, Emil Essing. I hope I said that right. E-M-I-L dot A-S-S-I-N-G on Instagram writes... 
What was it like being an East Coast youngin joining the Birdhouse team out in Cali? Was it a hard adjustment from Fibro? Nice, solid question. One second, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, it was sick. So I'm riding for Fibro, which is a dream come true to me, man. Cause like. I was just a young dude and I wanted to be a part of a crew of people that were doing epic shit for skateboarding. And like those Fibro, well, I was introduced to them through Solstice Skate Shop and Steve Rodriguez and Mark Nardelli and everybody involved in Fibro. They became instantly became my friends and they were doing epic stuff for skateboarding and just like killing it. And they were all people I looked up to because I was younger and um, they took me on trips and stuff. and. It was my first experience with working with a skateboard brand, but like the super organic kind where Steve Rodriguez just built this brand and did it because he loved skating and just killed it and, and helped a lot of skateboarders and create a lot of art for people and skateboarders. And he's in New York City, so I got exposure to the city and stuff. And then imagine like I had this opportunity, I believe Donnie ended up riding for Birdhouse and I had an opportunity. He like hit me up and wanted me to ride for Birdhouse, you know? and. At this time, like Fibro was my home and they were helping me teach me about skateboarding and about, you know, ethics and Steve Rodriguez is just a good role model and human in general, like someone to aspire to to try to be like. And he had a good business he has a good business mind as well, you know, like um so a mentor basically, you know. And uh, I had a chance to go ride for Tony Hawk's birdhouse, which is like so legendary watching those videos and stuff and just like, God damn, you know, and Tony Hawk, like, probably the first time I ever heard of skateboarding was Tony Hawk, you know, like, who, that's a lot of people's story, you know, like, the fingerprint or footprint Tony Hawk's had on skateboarding is undeniable, you know, like, and I had that, that seemed like a dream, you know, it was, like, crazy, and I was already enjoying what I was doing, and, but I was just, like, I have to do this, because it's one of those opportunities that, like, I just would be stupid to not take, I feel, no matter how good I, it was at Fibro. It was just like, that's a chance to like do it on a different level at that time or even the same level, but just get it, experience it. And it was, I got to move out West. Like it was a hard decision. It was like breaking up with like a girl kind of like, but not really. Cause like, but it's just hard to tell your family something and like hope they understand, you know, like I got to go try this. I got to see what this is, you know, like I know we have a good thing, but to me, that was like my opportunity to see what, I was watching in videos and stuff, so, um, yeah, it was hard, super hard, but I was so excited, you know, I had to see potential, I was like, this could be amazing, and it was, like, riding for Tony Hawk's company and Birdhouse and flying around and just the opportunities and the people I got to meet from that was amazing, and living in California was, like, some of the best times, man, so, um, yeah, it was hard, but you know, I'm friends with everybody at Fibro. They understood and were super cool. And I, Steve came out on the podcast and someone I fucking aspire to be one day or just like or have some of the same qualities of. And um, I'm actually going to meet up with him soon. I'm trying to have Josh Moretti on too, the Storm and Mormon. So epic. Such a great skateboarder. And uh, he wrote for Fibro. He, he left a good impression on me too. Shout out Dan Pencil, John Hoisington, Perry Morgan, all the Fibro crew, man. And everybody doing it, Tombo, all those guys that just carried it on and been killing that brand is like amazing to me. So, um, yeah, it was hard, but you know, fucking the adjustments in, to the Birdhouse team was just like kind of chaotic because like I went from from like a family close knit people that are like blue collar working to keep a brand going to a Birdhouse where they have like budgets and like you could do like there's people getting paid just to get skateboard, you know, whereas like. Uh, on Fibro, everyone's blue collar working, trying to build something, you know. So, and uh, so that adjustment was strange because I started skating with some people, and like, some of them took skating a little bit to granted, or were acting like a rock star and shit, and like, it was just like, got a little weird, crazy times, you know. <laughs> it was a weird adjustment. I just, it was different ways to look at skateboarding and do it, you know, back then. But we all made it happen. It was, it was sick. Like Birdhouse ended up. We had such a solid crew after a while. Like, the pros were so heavy, and they're all legendary dudes that established themselves. And then I was, like, we were in the AM team, you know? Like, me, Westgate, Matt Ball, John Goman, um, Sean Eaton. It was sick, man. We were living in Long Beach. Birdhouse was paying the rent. Like, we had an apartment. Just 
fucking skating all the time. That was kind of going back to when I was, like, always hurt because I skated. I would get bangers, get tons of footage, but then I'd be hurt for far too long because I was just trying too much, you know? Like, needed a break. But whatever. <laughs> skating all the fucking time. Amazing. And uh, But it was a good adjustment. It was not easy, though, for sure, by any means. Both were had their goods and bads, though. Mike Wolfert, he said, or he asked... Have you ever gone snowboarding before? If so, do you like it? Um, I've gone snowboarding once before, and I was younger, and it was super fun. Uh, I'm going to go snowboarding again. Fuck it. But I'm just going to go on, like, a kiddie trail. Because I went once, and I could stand up and carve and stuff, and, like, super fun, but I just, like, had a bad day just because. I don't know why. <laughs> I was like a cat in water. I had never been on, like, in, in, on a snowboard before, so no one, I was on my own. But um, it was fun, dude. And sometimes I just surf pieces of wood down hills in the winter just because I'm like, it's like snowboarding and dangerous. <laughs> so I'm going to go again, dude. And it was fun, dude. I, I, I could see how it would be fun. I love carving. Whoa, there's a huge beetle in here. Not really. All right. Um, I love carving. Just carving on a skateboard and swerving and carving and like snowboarding. And it's like all heels, toes, you know, your foot's strapped across it and you carve a lot. I'd love to practice that for power slide's sake, you know? You ever seen a skateboarder that skates like they snowboard? Like, they kind of have, like, a super twisty, spinny style, you know? I've seen that. Alex Motako. I hope I said that right. Alex underscore M-O-T-A-C-O. He writes, rails or ledges? Solid question. Solid question. Um, tough one, though. Rails are epic because you can lock in, like... If I have a rail, I hope it's round. I'll say that because round rails are awesome. You have to balance, like pinch them and like sit on it. And like, I don't know. I like square rails for certain stuff, but uh, I love rails. Not going to lie. But ledges are epic too. Switch back tails. Such good feeling trick. Like back tail on a ledge, right? Just a backside grind. Fuck it. Those are awesome too. Um, All right. Next question. Device fingerboard. Would you ever do another Lakeville contest? Solid question. If you want to, if, if Device Fingerboards wants to throw one with us, we're down to do another Lakeville contest. You let me know when, or we can figure it out. That would be epic. My brother used to throw contests at Lakeville uh, for years in a row. It was called like, it was called like a best contest, worst park, because it's like a prefab park, but it's fucking sick. It's so fun, because it's hard to skate, so everyone goes, and it's just like, whatever you get is sick, you know? And the contests were always epic, because people came just to have fun, so I'd be down, dude. Just uh, email me. All I need skate at Hotmail, and uh, we'll talk it out. <laughs> All right, next question. Jim Bates 4 asks what up jim shout out to jim if you guys don't know who jim bates is please look up jim bates skateboarding or he's also an author too man he wrote a child's book really sick and i think he has some grip tape you guys should look up jim bates because he's a legendary skateboarder who um he's dealt with the bout of depression and he's trying to um help people you know like that have dealt with that as well but even on top of that he just shreds and i really like everything jim bates does so check out jim bates please um, he writes, hey, An hey, Anthony, I hope all is well with you. What has been the most rewarding experience during your skateboard career? <sighs> um, for real, like, just, it's gonna sound corny and cliche, but, um, or maybe not, I don't know. But turning pro was a huge, huge, it was, like, super rewarding feeling. Because I turned w pro for World Industries, my good shout out to my good homie RP Best and Charlie Thomas and Chris Ortiz and that whole world industries team that we assembled was so epic. Mike Franklin, Andrew Cannon, like too many epic people, dude. Derek Fukuhara, Timmy Canoe, people I'm still involved with to this day. Like Derek and Timmy ride for all I need, you know. The thing we built with World was like special to me and they they gave me my first board and my first pro model shoe. And um I don't know. It was rad because the way that happened was R.P. Bess and Charlie Thomas wanted to do a resurgence, and Andrew Cannon, a resurgence of World Industries because they loved the brand. They loved the art. They loved the characters. They loved skateboarding, and, like, they saw what that brand was, and they felt like they were carrying on a torch, you know, which is, like, I feel that way with World Industries. I feel like it's such an iconic brand with so many skateboarders and artists and 
just great minds that built that brand, you know, it's like, you got to carry that forward somewhat, you know, like it's a, it's prestigious to be a part of at times. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that, but turning pro for that brand with those guys, more importantly with those guys. And, um, they were like, they knew what I was trying to do. I wanted to be a pro skateboarder. It was a goal. It was a dream. I talked about it all the time. And like, I just worked, I kept working to find ways to keep staying involved with skateboarding, you know, like even when opportunity came, I just tried to look at it. Like this is a possibility to grow, learn, expand. So, um, they knew what I was trying to do. You know, they knew I dealt with skateboarding because it was therapeutic to me because my family background, all those guys knew my story. I always talked about my story in interviews and every opportunity, like how I grew up because I just wanted to let people know like how I felt. So like what I was dealing with and how I was feeling. Cause I felt like an outsider cause I knew I was dealing with some heavy shit, you know, like my life, like the upbringing I had was like not a normal one, you know, but um, I would interrupt and, but I would talk about that shit personally. So for them to want to turn me pro and think that I deserve something like that and to like, and that I had worked hard enough. And these two legendary dudes, RP Best, who's worked with more brands than I could like, helped a lot of brands in the skateboarding industry and same with Charlie Thomas and his back threes and like for them to want to turn me pro that was like a huge thing to me that was like kind of like these dudes were like yeah we see what you're doing like we back it like let's go like you let's do this and they had the opportunity to help me and they, they did so shout out to them and that was like a huge moment to me man for sure that was like prestigious that was like the pro model story that I hope everyone has someday, you know, that they worked really hard for something, dreamt it, and, like, someone, or even themselves, believed in it and figured out a way to make it happen and carry it forward, you know? It's not an easy thing to do, you know? People can just turn them pro themselves pro tomorrow, but to have, like, a span of a career, like, there's dudes that have, have kept skating through thick and thin, whether there's money or not, and just kept it, pushing it forward and growing it in any way they can, and, like... And like those dudes, do, like, like a lot of people that open up skate shops to me are like pro. And then if they keep them going, there's dudes that have owned skate shops for 20 years. And they never have ever, never had a pro board, but they've done so much for skateboarding. It's like ridiculous. Like that, it's unbelievable, you know? So it's a lot of people. Um, yeah. This bug is tweaking on me. I wonder if you guys can hear it. How long have you been skateboarding? Hey, by the way. Isabella says, um, I've been skateboarding for 23 years, I think. <laughs> Thir I was 13 when I found it, 35 now. I've been skating for a long time. And I got paid to just skateboard, and I would go on tours, and I, like, was fortunate at times, you know? So, so I had a, like, I didn't, and like I told you, I didn't sit back and take it for granted, I promise you that. I worked hard for everything, and, like, um to a fault you know and uh so i skate all the time it was so fun it was ridiculously fun though it wasn't always gnarliness but even like i was just surrounded by so many skateboarders and skate parks and like everywhere you know there's so many excited so many epic skateboarders out there too it's easy to like sometimes i'm just like i'm gonna go on these sessions even if i can't walk you know like sometimes i'll go to the skate park and sit there and watch sessions and like film them just because like i need to be around skateboarding something therapeutic in it and just skateboarders are epic you know so a long time chapters i've been filming a lot too like if you check out the europe if you're on the live t youtube you know but listeners we have the youtube channel all i need skate and i've been filming endless sessions fucking stoked on them uh have you broken any bones and how many isabella asks uh, I th I'm sure I've like cracked a rib and just never went to the doctors and dealt with it. I broke a toe that sucked my like the one next to my pinky that one broke and that took a long time to heal. But um, just knee injury, ACL tore that, and then just rebuilding that, keeping that strong is like a struggle. But you just keep going, you keep working out, and keeping you stay sharp. You know, especially as you get older, you gotta make sure you physically feel good. You know, which is daily reminders. You know, so. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. let me see. Endless Bummer from Instagram says, what are some of the biggest cultural chances in skating today compared to when you were coming up? For example, I've always used to get Mount, uh, Mountain Dew seat thrown at me, moving cars. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Sorry, the, uh, the writing's a little broken. I only think it's suited that Mountain Dew is the unofficial official soda of skateboarding. Oh, chances. I mean, I had that happen. When I was younger, I had, um, 
I had a lot of crazy shit happen, but like out skating in the streets, I had like little girls throw glass bottles at us and shit, and like just call us stupid skate, like skater trash, and like fuck you, and just like people get crazy, you know. Um, I did see a shift where people were friendlier to us. Uh, they didn't think we were just like wasting our time or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's like I I agree with you. There was that shit though. I had that before. I think skating has uh, infiltrated the society because skateboarders have good skills, you know? Like, they're, skateboarders work hard and they, they're practicing, like, um, when you're trying tricks and trying to learn things and keep at, be consistent at things, you're just learning good qualities for life because you're not giving up on it and you're, like, constantly working at it. You're trying to readjust, figure it out. Like, learning an ollie, keeping your balance. Like, everything it takes to learn how to skateboard is like going to help you move forward in life because you need to have balance in life you know just so learning it physically when you're developing is like really good for you and can be therapeutic too you know like you can get lost in moments learning how to skateboard um and i think just people caught on to that because we're growing and people like if skateboard no one owns skateboarding it's free and it's beautiful and people have just invested their lives into it and it just keeps growing and moving forward, which is fucking beyond my wildest dreams. So that's the biggest shift, man, is that people are just stoked and are grateful to be skateboarders, you know? Like, I feel that way. I'm thankful that we have skateboarding and that we have the opportunity to, to do it and to build identity and personality and character through it. There's other places on this planet where you can't even live such a modest dream, you know? Like, that's cr crazy to me. Julian Butler 2 writes, what is some advice for a new skater starting out? All right, so if you first get into skating, take your time. Learn how to balance. Find your center of balance and go slow. Enjoy it. I know you want to destroy the world and you want to be king of the world and like, but go slow. Build up a good foundation. That way you can have skateboarding in your life for as long as you choose to. Because you can stay healthy. You don't have to get gnarly, too gnarly. You can find balance. A good good advice, too, would be don't fight your style. Like, some people, you watch other people skate and you love their style, but it doesn't naturally, it's not your style, you know? Like, and uh, you can hurt yourself trying tricks that feel awkward that you haven't quite got there yet, you know? But figure out whatever feels natural to you on your skateboard and how you ride. Find your balance. And then apply yourself to it and do it at a pace that you can enjoy and you can have skateboarding in your life for a long time because that's the ideal you know to be able to skateboard so yeah my that's my advice have fun be cool try hard like in the sense that like if you want to do some stuff push yourself don't don't make it too easy on yourself like work hard too i'm not saying don't try stuff that's out of your limits i'm saying build yourself up to them so you can do these amazing things safely and uh, not get unnecessarily hurt, you know? Like eating well is good if you're gonna skateboard. Stretching, I always stretch. And I'm trying to work on eating better, you know? Like, um, you know, that's just the thing that's for life though. You apply that to your life too, you know? And you're gonna get better and better. You're gonna feel healthier. You're gonna like figure things out, feel more optimistic, focused, and just try to remember that daily, you know? Not easy, though. <laughs> you need reminders. You need reminders. You need to keep busy, you know? Um, okay, next question. John Algerian. Sorry if I butchered that, but J-O-N-A-L-G-E-R-I-A-N. What is the craziest alcohol-related story you remember from any of your previous skate travels and tours? Um, alcohol. I mean, there was a time when I was younger in Tampa. We were at the Tampa Am, and we were on... I was riding for Soul Technology, which at that time was Etnies, America, and um, S. And they basically decided to take all the Ams to Tampa, Florida. So, like, they brought a bunch of us. It was, like, Billy Marks, myself, Tony Silva, um, Tony De Silva, um, Josh Harmony, Peter Ramondetta... All of us. Leo Romero, I believe. Unless I'm getting trips mixed up. But we all went to Florida. And Nick Dompierre, John Hoisington, Patrick O'Dell from Epically Later was the photographer for Thrasher. Um, 
Craig Metzger, the man, organized that whole trip for Soul Tech, and we went down there. And it was like just crazy kids and like a crazy skate park and like a nightlife and alcohol and the hotels are known were known for getting destroyed and like people were just it was like a war zone it was like mattress thrown in the pool uh, fireworks just being lit off like it was like dorm rooms like times 10 outdoors in tampa florida dudes like jumping on the pine the not pine trees uh palm trees and like bending them until they snapped um i can't imagine what the bill was oh how dumb how dumb <laughs> I didn't really partake in that much. I was drunk, though, for sure, and I definitely was laughing. But dudes were just wilding out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there was definitely a, sh a tough bill for that. I, You know what I did do, though? I will admit, threw some fireworks in the pool. Never seen that before. Never seen that happen before. And the fireworks blew up. That was Billy Marks enticing me. <laughs> the, they would go underwater, and the firework uh, work would still pop, which is crazy. Um, but, yeah, that was kind of crazy alcohol related i've been in other situations where people are just drunk and fight like that's usually not not skateboarding i don't know if i've really been to a party with a bunch of skateboarders that fought but like just life shit where there's alcohol and someone has a drinking problem and then they fucking don't know how to act and they encroach on you and you have to like get into altercations and then it gets physical like that shit sucks you know um but on skating nothing too bad nothing too bad we we're pretty safe Schmikey Schmurda <laughs> writes, if you could change one thing about your skate career, what would it be? Um I would have started all I need earlier, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. It started right when it needed to, really, which is perfect. So mid recession, like just put my money into it, like not knowing what if I'd ever like just like put my savings into it basically. Like now's the time, like, to invest in your love, you know, like bottom of the barrel <laughs> it, it was nice so it was right when i needed skateboarding to like put some money into it and like build something that's our own you know like um but i don't know nothing really i don't think i would change anything it's been a crazy ride maybe i'd change myself just the way i acted or things i said or just tried to not make as many mistakes you know because you're young you make mistakes you're trying to figure it out you don't know like <clears throat> a lot of op a lot of things about being successful is just recognizing opportunity and keeping your shit like together you know and trying to recognize opportunity and be optimistic enough to not you know and and be able to work for it and like taking on work and building up and like you know maybe just when I was younger I probably blew some opportunities not on purpose um green river says don't touch my skateboard <laughs> oh he's quoting that video yeah yeah, that wasn't my finest hour either, <laughs> arguing with that guy online, but I was standing up for myself at least, you know, and I just had a bad day. I was having a bad day, and I was trying to get a trick and a line, and he wasn't a cop, and he just intruded on me too, you know what I mean? It's like I didn't, I wasn't bothering him. He chose to come up into the situation, you know? <laughs> uh, next question. GG, let me find it, sorry. Young Satire, how do you feel that YouTube and social media have changed skateboarding? Uh, do you see any untapped potential? Do you think those changes are good or bad? Um, I think that it's the humans that make the technology worthwhile. You know what I mean? Like, So I feel like social media has allowed more people to express themselves, to use the platform to express themselves and we're all learning and growing, you know? So there's degrees of this thing, you know? And some of us are more comfortable than others. And it's just a crazy platform that we can see each other and be so transparent and be able to have these long form conversations and like share and connect. And this wasn't possible like when I was younger, you know? Like cell phones wasn't that long ago. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I just know it's a tool, so. It's like fire. You can use fire to burn a village down or you could use fire to forge steel and like then use that steel to like chop down trees and make skateboards or build homes or something. You know what I mean? Like it's just a tool. You can use it to destroy or to create with. And the same with like YouTube. It's like, or not necessarily YouTube, but social media and the connectivity is like, it's like you're in 
control of your own perspective and you can wield it you know and people have it's empowering to be like connected to something like that um so it could be good or bad but it's just a tool you know like you can use it for whatever purpose you want you know like some people use it just to crack jokes some people use it to build a brand or express how they feel or some people use it to connect with people other people use it in the worst ways you can imagine, trying to just always sell you something maybe or like jam it down your throat or trick you into a sale or some people can show like, like there's so many different ways that people use the internet. It's unbelievable. And it's crazy, you know? It's, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel because before this, it was like magazines and videos. That's what it was in skating anyways. We had magazines and videos and those were like controlled by those companies and they kind of like, portrayed whoever could pay or whatever to be in those and now the internet is like connected but i don't know about all like i don't know how long it takes to build these things up like i've been i've just been going at it for so long and trying to get better and better and better and figure it out you know so like i'm not an expert but i'm just trying to use it to express myself to show all the blessings and all the awesome things that we're working towards and and building up and growing and like i try to use it as like a force for good so social media and all that stuff, you know? And sometimes it's sales because, you know, you, you gotta, if we can't sell some of the stuff, then we it's, we can't keep doing the stuff, you know? Like, people gotta, it's work, you know? Like, that's the idea is to work for it, you know? Like, it's not free and you have to work for it. So you build it up and then you sell a good product, <laughs> you know? So that you believe in and you represent it and you guys all work hard for that, you know? like. So to me, I like the social media because I'm like, this. everyone here is a realist that works hard and is optimistic and focused and people who have dedicated their times and, and this thing built out of the recession, all I need came out of the recession, you know, like um, that's right when I put my savings in. So, but the social media helps us get that out and connect and, and dude, it helps me in my life too because I get to connect with everyone and it's like, it's insane, you know? But there's, I guess there's gatekeepers too, you know? It's like scary because like, someone owns the internet and they can censor you and they do crazy things like i'm on youtube right now and i hear stories about censorship and stuff like that like it's weird policing you know so i don't know things are terrifying you know <laughs> but i don't know what's true and what's not but i've just been using it to kind of test my brown boundaries to at least like express myself and to tell my story and to share like things that i've learned and help other people grow like i try to focus on that side of things and just to have fun and share like comedic moments with each other and like i don't know this thing's so sick it's too much fun man i try to work uncontrollably hard and focused on things so i can't think about all the craziness but sometimes you gotta stop and think so that was a good question um shred and dread 93 what trick annoys you or gives you the most trouble especially when fil filming um I mean, there's a lot of tricks that are hard for me, like nollie inward heels. I could be better at switch in or inward heels. I could work on. That's one in for. That's one example. Varial kickflips are kind of tough. I can do them, but I could polish them up. Uh, when filming, uh, especially when filming. Oh, uh, okay. So like, if it, what tricks do I try that annoy me? I don't know. It depends on the day, dude. A lot of the times, like, stuff I try when I'm filming, I know I can do it. I've, like, worked up to that point, and I'm like, all right, I know I can do it on this. That's why I want to try. And some days, it's like a battle of my own uh, inner self, because maybe I'm just not feeling as good as I could that day. So, like, you're trying to trick, and you're just trying to battle with having a good day. You already had a bad day, you know? Like, maybe you took an unnecessary slam or something in the beginning of the session on top of, like, thinking about your dog passed or something hypothetically <laughs> uh, but like that's a bad day you know and like you're out there trying to film a trick and then like it might be something that you could do super easy you know but all that other shit's on your mind and you're not focused but you're still doing it it's like yeah that's not that's tough you know that i've been in that situation and then there's times where like you're confident in everything and everything's going good and then it's just for whatever reason your go-to isn't working <laughs> or something you know like <laughs> It just depends on the day, really, you know? Yeah, this is live. Hi. What up? Um, but yeah, not any one trick in particular annoys me, but it just depends on my mood, really, or how focused I am, you know? Nowadays, I when I get out street skating to film, I'm usually pretty sharp, focused, feeling good on my board, you know? 
Um, live feed says Natasha. She writes, "Big fan. Your videos always make my day." Ah, sick. That means a lot. Thank you, man. That's thank you. That's awesome. Ah, sick. That's so cool. That stokes me out, man. I love those vlogs. I put my heart into those vlogs. So to get that feedback means a lot. And those vlogs are full of people I love and things I love and, you know. So thanks for the feedback on the live feed. Um, she, oh, she continues. I've been feeling unwell recently. My full name is Natasha Hunt and, oh, sorry. Is there any chance you can quick give it, get well soon, Natasha? Oh, hell yeah, Natasha, please. Get better, feel, uh, get better, feel better. Um, make sure, I was talking about this earlier, but make sure you're eating well, eat some like, just good food and uh, take care of yourself, rest. Give yourself, energy comes from rest, Natasha. So, Natasha Hunt, feel better and uh, stay optimistic and happy, you know? I've been there, so you just gotta not stress. You gotta relax and uh, just keep killing it. Later, Natasha Hunt. Sick name. I like that last name too. Uh, all right, couple. More. All right, I'm gonna take another question. Let me see. Let me see how many questions we got left. All right, I'm gonna rapid fire through some of these because, uh, or uh, maybe I'll do a part two. But let me see. Uh, Paul McGray says, "What gives, man? Uh, what gives? The levy gives. <laughs> That's my answer." All right, one sec. And finally, very quickly. Oh, that's too funny, Natasha. I love it. <laughs> I will not read that out. But that is a hilarious joke. <laughs> Live feed's amazing. Um, let's see. The Powerful Fish 27. Favorite strand of weed. Um, I don't really have a favorite one. But uh, I just enjoy weed. <laughs> I don't have a favorite strand, really. Just sativa. Or like, I, I guess that's just strand, but I don't have a favorite, like, sticky, icky, whatever it is. I don't know, like, the names of them. All right, Quinn, Quinn. But I do enjoy weed in moderation. I balance it out. I do smoke a lot, though. I do it when I'm skating sometimes. I do it when I'm working. Usually if I'm working on my own stuff, I will. But like if I work for someone else, I won't smoke weed. You get you can't be too intoxicated either way. Even with coffee, like coffee is one for me. Like it's a drug. Like people don't want to like think of coffee as a drug, but like it alters your mood. You know, you drink coffee, you're like fucking. Oh, I got a weird thing from Google Complaint. All right, fair enough. That's good to know. Though I'm in Massachusetts with my license, but <laughs> Google complaints. Okay. I hope I can talk about it, though. A lot of it is for arthritis. Like, uh, I have no ACL on my left knee, so I blew that out a long time ago skateboarding. So pain, it's good for arthritis. It's great for it, actually. And it's good for, like, you know, community and, like, helps you relax. You have to be moderate, you know? But apparently they don't want me to do it on the live feed. So, just so people know, Google complaints, compliance department. We have been told that the illegal activity is occurring on this live stream and we'll have no choice but to take action if continued. Okay. Hello, my name is Simon and I am from the Google department from Technology Live Streams. We have been alerted to your stream. All right, if we're gonna be used, if we're gonna use YouTube, they've given us the warning. <laughs> but I enjoy it, and I have my license, and I and uh, it's good for uh, certain things. Now I don't abuse it. Just like coffee, um, sugar. Sugar is like a gnarly one. Think about sugar, and like people that like our obesity problem in America, and like oh they put it in everything, which is gnarly too. So like keep that in mind. That's like a drug that really fucks people up. You know. Or tobacco, like, um, or the cigarettes is, like, a gnarly one, too, like, back in the day. Or now, I don't know. People still smoke cigarettes, but there's so much additives in those things. You should look, you know? We should look into those things and make sure that 
I mean, you don't want to ban everything. You want to be safe and moderate. But people got to know how to consume a drug. You know, like you got to know when you can handle it, when you can. If things aren't, if you, it's not working in your life and you're making a lot of mistakes and things aren't going well and like your mood's all over the place and you can't like form rational thinking and stuff, then um, try being sober. And me even being sober. Hey, and even being, <laughs> Green River. Oh, come on, Simon. Even being sober is like not good. Being sober all the time, like 100% just sober is gnarly, you know what I mean? So you wouldn't be able to like relate to people and balance things out. And, and like um, sometimes we need a negative and positive. You need both, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's live on the podcast too, is that you can't do that on YouTube. Even if you're in a city and you have your license medicinally. I wonder. I bet I could find mine. It's over there somewhere. ETZ Xenox or Xenox says hello. What up, my dudes? What up, everybody out there? I hope you guys are all living your life. You're happy. Maybe you got the day off from work, or maybe you got home early from work, like I did, and had fun. And you're able to do these live feeds and express yourself and be honest and not feel like you're breaking crazy laws and all that stuff. Like, I hope you guys are chilling and happy and healthy out there. Um. Let's see. Quinn Quinn, pick five of your favorite homies to skate with and then rank them in order of best dress to worst dress. Oh shit. Um, I'm a little stoned right now, so <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> um, five, let's see. So Jeff tells Manic, and he's a sharp dresser. He kills it. Ramsey's a steezy dresser, another top five. He killed it. He always has style. Um, JV has a good style. Dress is sick. Let's see. That's three. Um, KK, Kevin Clem. Dress it. Uh, sometimes I call him Bright Kevin because he wears the Eraser Bright t-shirt. <laughs> um, and who else? Let's see who comes. Ryan Adelman. Adelman dresses steezy because he's kind of scrappy. He just looks scrappy, which is sick looking. And he's got cool style. And his pants and clothes always look sick. So in that order. Jeff's the best dress for sure, Quinn. All right, next. Jacob, Ch I don't know, C-H-A-V-I. Sorry. The board designs are sick. Is there a process to how they get designed? Was there a favorite so far? Damn, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. That's awesome. Um, Yeah, my friend Peter James Glenn, he draws all the art for all I need. Um, and... The process is me, um, Conrad, Furla, Furla, my good homie Conrad Furla, and Peter L James Glenn. We meet up, we drink some beer, smoke some weed in his in his property that he just bought in America, and have a good time, and uh, just make jokes and stuff. And then we start brainstorming about ideas for graphics and stuff like that, and just like what we could make and like. I don't know, usually we do that, we come up with the art and the concept of the series, because we've been working on a lot of series. Like, if you look at our boards now, I'll show you real quick. Um, our new boards, our wartime animal series, um, is a, that's our series that we just had. So this is the Corporal Goonan McRooster, and he, we, the design is basically a rooster going to war. <laughs> and I, my only thing I asked Peter, I said, could you give the rooster a look like He's seen some shit. Like he's been in the shit. So this is like the Vietnam like uh, one in the series. And then we also, the second board in the new series is uh, Timmy Knuth, Major Stank Ass Knuth. And it's a skunk in a post-apocalyptic like uh, war zone and he's like standing on the skulls. And uh, I don't know, we had a good time making this one up, coming up with the concept. So it's all the animals are going to war. So we got the rooster, we got the skunk, he's got the all I need on the AK, on the extended clip. And then um, next one in the line is our 8.0. This is our all I need foxhole Fukuhara. And, uh, you know, that dude's, it's like World War Two, you know, like in the trenches, just sandbags digging out. The fox is crushing it. This deck, uh, I love this one. It's so sick. And then the last one <clears throat> is my pro model. And it's a 
Teddy Roosevelt inspired elephant that Peter drew with a pistol. Which I'm really stoked on the colors. I was really hyped on the purple and the gray and the, the blue that we picked and just how it came together. This is the 8.5. Commander Big Nuts Shetler. <laughs> He's got elephant Titus. <laughs> oh shit. Um yeah, so we get together as adults that contribute and have a good time and come up with graphic skateboard graphic ideas and uh yeah skateboarding saves lives for always it helps it inspires it's, it, what it takes to skateboard is amazing to me i'm sorry <laughs> all right i'm gonna keep going we only got a couple left sorry i just don't want facebook or youtube to get crazy at me are they one and the same now or who's who owns who the overlords facebook questions scott listenfeld love the show who's your all-time favorite skater uh all-time favorite skater oh, it's gonna be tough can I have more than one, please? Please. Can I have more than one pro skater? Favorite pro... All right, I'll go through it. Um, Aaron Susky, one of my favorite pro skaters. Life pro, for sure. Donnie Barley, legendary. Life pro. Um, Brandon Westgate, legendary. Um, those dudes right there. Solid list of people. Choo, choo, choo. All right, James Jones asks... How long have Westgate and you been skating buds? I know, quite some time. Sick, that was perfect timing. Lined up good. Uh, dude, me and Westgate have known each other since we were little kids. Seriously, like, little groms. Like, <sighs> almost, like, I was, I, he just started skating, and I had already been skating for, like, a year or two, probably. Something like that. He was, like, the littlest kid at the skate park slash skate shop, and uh, we just linked up. Me and Brandon were just homies. I think we both just got it. Like, we lo both, like, love skating, and it helped us, and, like, I don't know. We had fun together, because me and Westgate can uh, joke. He's, like, got a good sense of humor, and I can go back and forth, and we just, like, I don't know. But something about, about him, me and him have just been friends since, man. Like, the homie. He's unbelievable skateboarder, man. It's unbelievable. And, like, what he does with the cranberries is insane. He has his own cranberry bog where he literally runs the whole thing every year, like full commitment. Like I, he, he'll pay us to go for day labor just to go help him. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of tight. Brandon Westgate's the man. James, thanks for that um, question. Alan Ellis, what up homie? What up Alan? What got you into skateboarding the first time? My homie Dale, I answered that earlier in the feed. Um, but what got you into it besides a person? I think just the idea that you could like you could balance on something and manipulate it. And like when he did like a kickflip and rode away with like his own style and like his own thing, I instantly wanted to try to like chip away and figure out how to do that. Cause it looked fun, you know? So that kind of like what hooked me in was the possibility. I was like, you can do stuff like that. It's insane. Uh, Anthony ben Benton. What up, Anthony? What up, Ant? Ant's from uh, where I live. He goes to the edge a lot. He wrote, when did you get your first skateboard? I was 13 years old. Uh, I think I might have been twelve. I was on the line of thirteen and twelve or twelve and thirteen. Uh, and what's your goal for all I need? My goal for all I need is to grow that, to grow it, to grow it, and learn, get better. Um, just focus on good things and just keep growing it. See where it can go. You know, but just focus on skateboarding, on my family, my friends, the skate community. Um, I'm gonna focus on myself, trying to get better and try to like not get in my way so much and just try to improve daily and try to cut out as many bad habits or just like, I just want, for me, I just want to keep getting better and keep growing and um, reach my full potential. I would be fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if you're always working towards something and trying to get better, it's like life is a long journey, and but you can improve the ride because you get better as an individual and you stop kicking yourself in the ass so much and maybe you know people don't stress you out and freak you out make you feel alienated or weird and people get better around you you guys get better together and then you have a community of people that are healthy happy focused and like have good skills to build things and do create awesome worlds together and identity and personality and characters like it's amazing to create with people and be a part of communities and like be able to be so connected, you know, like we just have to like, we can't 
like the whole thing with YouTube right now, with the weed thing, like that's unbelievable, you know? Like, it's like, uh, I get it though, but I'm just saying like, you gotta be able to express who you are. And some of what you are can be mistakes, you know? Like, we, there's not, it's not all good. It's not all good, always. Life is long and hard and we have to like, continue to grow, for real. And a lot of the shit is us doing it to ourselves or the people around us or like people that are just like not feeling life as deeply or appreciating it, you know, like, or it's a game. Like some people just think life is a game, you know what I mean? Like it's reckless. Like you can, like they don't even, aren't even accountable for their actions and what their words mean. And like, there's gotta be a balance in between that, you know, cause you gotta learn and make mistakes as you grow. So it's like, you can't be perfect and rules just, I get that there's got to be rules, but like, you don't want to exclude either. You want to be able to balance it out and like, you don't want to alienate. And like, there's some things that you disagree with that I might agree with and vice versa, you know? Like, Anthony, what is life about? It's about, it's about realizing that we each have a spark inside of us. And we can do epic things with that, like create epic lives, no matter who you are. You can find a way to like build up a healthy, happy life with those around you. Or you can aspire to, I hope, you know? But it's whatever you want to make it. That's the crazy thing about life is like, there's people that are just destructive too, you know? They don't like life. They're not like it's the whole spectrum of life. It's all out there. You know, we got to live, learn and grow. I wish I had all the answers. I don't have, I just try to speak from my heart. Could be wrong. Could be right. I'm trying to learn and grow, but I mean, well, and I hope that means something. I love people that try to get better, try to focus and learn. It's a skill, you know, and I'm trying, trying to figure it out. Angelo says I did a back. I did a flip trick on my board with both feet under the board and jumping. I didn't land it with both feet, but I landed with one. I started learning it today and ollied over a stick. Hell yeah. Angelo, that's sick, man. I love skateboarding. It's like the funnest thing to do. And to be able to put it all together like in a line like that, time well spent. Probably having fun too, right? Um, but that sounds epic. All right, next question. Shay Green, what's up? Um, what's the largest difference between street skating here and say some place like California? I kind of talked about it. We have more weathered spots and they're constantly changing and California has like good smooth stuff. And, but there's like the good and bad cause California like it loses a little bit in the aesthetics cause everything is like so perfect and clean. And then on the East coast you have like, it might be a crusty ass ledge, but but you can skate it and it'll look sick if you got like a photo or a trick on it, you know? Like it might just look sick. It might not be the hardest perfect thing ever. Like it might not be the easiest thing where you can get super tech on it, but you might choose a basic trick and just work for it. And since the spot just looks aesthetically pleasing, looks cool or rugged or raw or weathered or something, it just gives a feeling to it, you know? And that enhances it to me, I, you know, I like that. Um, Justin Rossillo. What's up? Did at any point you want to give up? And what made you persevere? Um, I never really want to give up. I mean, I've been like, I was suicidal when I was younger. I thought about like, I had thoughts like that because things were just loss after loss, you know? Like things that were out of my control as a little kid. I was a kid and adults were falling apart. Like that's sometimes shit happens in life and things can go wrong. And it was going wrong and I was just a kid born into that. So, um, but I, 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 I thought about it. I was like, dude, things are just so bad. You know, like I felt like I had no control, but I never like did it. I thought about it. I had those thoughts and I just like never give up though. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty optimistic for whatever reason. Like it's really ingrained in me to like, I think it's survival mode. So like. So I'm constantly like trying to be like, nah, it'll get better, it'll get better, we can do this, we can do that. Like a lot of it I was like, 
we got to control ourselves. Like, my mom was so out of control with herself. She didn't have control, you know, of her basic feelings and emotions. And she would do drugs and it would fucking send her all over the place. There was no moderation in her life, you know, like, not like me. Like, I have a moderate life. Like, I balance out my coffee and my weed and try to balance my sugar. I love fucking donuts, you know. But, um... I hope I can swear. Can I swear? Can YouTube, can I swear? Because I, let me see. Yo, Ant, it's clean. What's up? What up, homie? What up, clean? Um, Anthony, have you ever gone freestyle rock climbing? And what do you think of it? Um, this question is funny because it comes from, or not funny, sorry. It comes from HIV positive transgender. That's a strange name. But um, he asked if I've ever been rock climbing or transgender. This is perfect. Um, I love rock climbing. I've actually done it indoors. There's a spot in New Bedford, Carabiners. My lady taught a pole dancing class there. My lady pole dances. She loves it. It's like skateboarding to her. She does it. She teaches it. She's strong as shit because of it. It's sick. It's like artistic too. So cool. Um, yeah, I back rock climbing all day. Um, pack right. As soon as they're back in stock, I'm getting an AI and cap. I can't wait. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, our new one's gonna go up probably next week. I, we got a new design on our embroidered hat, so it's a really good fit and hit hat, man. I love this hat, so, um, probably release that next week. That'd be sick. Um, you're from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Well, I lived in New Bedford. I've lived all over the place, but I spent a portion in New Bedford. It was a, well, it was a, it was like the best and worst times of my life. <laughs> I found skateboarding there, so that was like the all, most best thing that has improved my life gratefully, uh, great a lot. But then that was when my mom was like falling apart, like at her worst, you know. So dealt with a lot of crazy shit as a kid. Yeah, I think there's he, he, uh, a lot of heroin there. That's what he says. Um, there was. I mean, I, I imagine it came off the boats, man. I don't really know because I'm not political and I don't like ha see the numbers in that sense or whatever. But when I lived there, I lived right next to the projects there by the high school. And like, it seemed like there was a lot of substance abuse, but also just dysfunction and like broken people, you know? Like, I don't know if it's like the drugs that keep them there or if they do it. I don't know. I don't really understand it, but... There's a lot of broken families and, you know, things happen, you know, and it carries over generationally. So, like, if we don't beat those demons, like, they get passed on to our seeds, you know? So. <laughs> Elwood's a barker. He's interrupting the show. Uh, did at any point... Oh, that was... Thank you, Justin. Thank you for that question. All right, I'm going to take last one more question, though, and then I'm going to go. Okay, this is the live feed. I'm lucky. Situate is pretty much crime-free town. That's good. Yeah, I mean, where I live now, I, I, mean, I think New Bedford is doing a lot better, though, because this is when I was younger, but now there's, like, skateboarders opened up a burrito shop downtown. There's a skate shop there called Solstice Skate Shop. Like, the young people have art studios down there. There's, like, more stuff popping off, you know what I mean? Like, so I think it's improved, but I think just there was, like, a... It lingered a little, you know, because... You know, I don't know. That's what happens. There's places like that all over the place. New England has a lot of places like that. People deal with that heroin epidemic. E epidemic. My cousins have dealt with that, you know, and had to fight it. Um, yeah, okay. Last question. George Roca. With all your success in skateboarding, what made you decide to stay in New England rather than move to California? Solid way to end it. Great question. Thank you, George. Thank you to everybody from the Facebook questions, the Instagram questions. You guys uh, uh, made the show happen, so thank you. This is cool. Um, I, I decided to stay in New England because that's where I grew up, and that's where, I don't know, I was just familiar with the people in New England and the way they thought, and like we dealt with winter together. There's... People, it's just like, um, like I was saying, it's just different on the West East Coast, and that was just so familiar to me. And my family's here, and like, I just want to try to improve, like, and be connected to my family and uh, build one, you know, like, uh, do everything we're trying to do in skateboarding, you know. Um, 
I don't really like uh, thinks about with all the success. Thank you. That means a lot because like I've kept to me the success is keeping skateboarding in your life for a long time, and uh, keep at it. You know, like I'm fortunate enough that I've like been 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 able to like build it into my life. I still work too. Like I don't like everything with skateboarding. I just invest my time and energy, and I um, we grow it and. We try to do a lot of cool stuff in skateboarding, and it's usually from people that support the brand. They support it, and I'm able to put that money right back into skating and do epic shit. So that's like the real success is that people want to help and keep it going and grow it. And uh, we have a crazy skate community in New England, and we're working on our next video for all I need, which is skateboarding, which helps with everything in my life. It helps keep me honest because you get on a skateboard and you can't. You got to humble yourself because you can get hurt. So you got to find that line, you know. So. Pretty much anything you have to apply yourself full heartedly to will do that, you know. But um, all right, I'm done for today. Uh, YouTube, you warned me. I know your policies. Someone will make a platform maybe where we can not that's not an issue. Let me know. I don't know anything about Fortnite. I should look it up. Someone asked me. Who's the best skateboarder in Massachusetts? Um, I'll name a couple. Uh, if you don't mind. Billy Drown destroys. He's one of my favorites. Corey Goonan. These guys that ride for all I need. And Kevin Clem. Uh, Sammy Skates is shredding. There's so many good dudes. I can't... Steven Brayman. Evan. Um, too many to name. But uh, I'm gonna go, guys. I'll talk to you later.